Lord Jesus, and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the Catholic Church celebrates the great feast of St. Hilary of Poitiers, great bishop, fourth century philosopher, whose studies made him a champion of Orthodox Trinitarian theology. During the most difficult periods of the church early history, he protected the church and its members by brilliantly defending the sacred humanity of Jesus Christ, while also defeating this great early era of the church, Arianism, which denied Christ's placement within the Trinity. He was also a very gentle and courteous man, devoted to writing some of the greatest theology on the Holy Trinity, and was like his master in being labeled a disturber of the peace. In the very troubled period of the church, his holiness was lived out both in scholarship and controversy. Little is known about his early life before he became bishop. Fittingly, what historians do know about him derives mostly from personal details contain, contained within his extensive theological works. Those remarks indicate that Hilary was born to a pagan family in present-day France around the year 310, three years before the Roman Empire declared its official toleration of Christianity. Hilary grew himself up apparently without any significant Christian influence, but received an otherwise comprehensive education in Latin and in the Greek classics. Not unusual for his era, he was rigorously studied, he rigorously studied both Greek philosophy and the Bible. And like many other church fathers, he came to accept the truth of the Bible by recognizing its compatibility with philosophy and the sciences. So what lesson do we learn today? We do not have to be great theologians like this great Saint Hilary today, but we have to have this desire ourselves to grow in the knowledge of the faith. We have to have the knowledge of our faith. St. John says in the scripture, he will teach you all the truth. Way back in the year 311, the same one year after the birth of the saint of Hilary, the year 311, a man by the name of Peter Balsam was hailed before the governor of Palestine, brought before his attention and asked his name and family Balsam is my family name, he boldly answered. But I received the name of Peter in baptism. I am a Christian. This was a courageous statement in the day when admitting that you were a Christian. This practically meant signing your death warrant in these times. When the judge asked him his employment, Peter again bravely declared, what employment can I have more honorable or what better thing can I do in the world than to live as a Christian? Do you know the imperial laws? Then the judge asked. I know the laws of God and the law of the universe, Peter answered. You will quickly know that there is a law of the emperor commanding all to sacrifice to the gods or be put to the death, said the judge. And you will know one day, responded Peter, that there is a law of the eternal king, proclaiming that everyone shall perish who offers sacrifice to devils. Which do you counsel me to obey? And which think you ought I to choose? To die by your sword or to be condemned to everlasting misery by the sentence of the great king and the true Lord? It says, when Peter insisted that he would never sacrifice to the gods of wood and stone, 
The judge reminded him that he had the power to put him to death for insulting the gods. The judge ordered him to be put on the rack of cruel torture that pulled bones from their sockets and stretched muscles out of shape. Despite the entreatment of his friends and relatives, Peter would not sacrifice to the gods. The judge gave sentence. It, he said, it is our order that Peter Balsam, for refusing to obey to the command of the emperor and obstinately defending the law of a man crucified, be himself nailed to the cross. And nailed to the cross he was, just like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This was the glorious trial and death of Peter Balsam, martyr and saint of the church. This story suggests then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, two reflections for us. First, St. Peter knew what answers to give to the judge. He even had the better of the so-called argument. And the second, Peter gave his life for his faith. He made the safe, supreme sacrifice of his life for his belief. Too many Catholics today are unable to give an answer for the faith that is in them. With all our education, we should be many, there should be many more followers of Christ who should be able to give an intelligent, satisfactory answer to questions asked every day, answers which you will find in especially the Catechism of the Church. Remember, each and every Catholic household should have the Catechism, not be buried amongst your things of nostalgia in the house, but to be used, to read, to be able, when you meet somebody in the high street, to defend the faith. Remember, the greatest gift that God gives you is your free will. Choose to decide to know the faith. If you know the faith, then you can love the faith. Remember, the catechism, the penny catechism, tells us the purpose in our life is to know, love, and serve the Lord. We have to know first, then we can love. The priests are happy and willingly explain the meaning of the Catholic teaching and practice, but so much the better if the faithful would be have the capacity to give these explanations to people in everyday life. Saint Peter then gave his life for the faith. How many of us are willing to give just a few minutes of our week to learn our most glorious faith? Too few are familiar with the fundamental teaching of our faith, yet they will not take the time, they will not make the effort to learn. Another Catholic was losing her faith. I'll put in it in this way. She was throwing her faith away by failing to feed it. Neither had she read the Bible. Neither had she ever read a book explaining the Catholic teachings and practices. She professed to be educated, yet was doubting and calling in question truths whose meaning and reasons she did not even know, truths which God himself has made known to us. Reflect well then, dear brothers and sisters of Christ, and learn the faith. A strong suggestion is that we take some time, at least five or 10 minutes each week, to read our Bible, or even better, at least a chapter of the Bible each day. You do not know the power of the word of the Lord. To study one or other question and answer in our Catholic way, reading the Catechism, to think over some of the truths and teachings of the Catholic Church. If St. Peter Barson could give his entire life for his faith, then at least we can give a little part of our lives for our faith. Since the homily you heard from the priest last Sunday, how many of you have spent five minutes in studying or reading the Catholic faith? We cannot possibly explain everything in these short sermons, the priests. You must do your part 
by reading, study, and reflection and thought. A suggestion is that every one of you, when you recall the heroic story of St. Peter Balsam, that you determine just when and where and how you will begin to know your faith better. Why not make this a resolution this year to know the faith? Remember the two points from his trial and death. He could and did give the answer and explain for his faith clearly and courageously. And he gave his life in the end for his faith, Jesus Christ. Also, we have to reflect that the best way to understand and know the faith is to ask the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is the model of our faith. She is the one who had this magnificent infused knowledge of the doctrine and all the faith and also the scripture. So ask with humility Our Lady for a greater light to understand our glorious faith. In some measure, we want to imitate Jesus Christ. We want to prepare ourselves to answer questions and objections about our beloved faith. This is the story of this great saint today, Hilary, a champion of the Catholic faith to crush the serpent of Arianism. We want to give at least a part of our lives to study the truths of the faith, the truths of faith that God has made known and preserved through the deposit of the Catholic faith, that we may understand and that we may make these truths part of our thinking, part of our living, and part of our very souls. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.